We are back with part three of this week's reading of the Messiana Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version, TLB. And I'm hoping part one and two got okay. There's, um, I'm watching this online recorder and sometimes you can't tell. Um, there's a lot of spikes going on um, as, as this is recording. And sometimes that means there's a lot of skipping um, that will be in the final production. So hopefully there's not too much of that. Um, we are now on part three. Um, we are reading First Samuel, the introduction, in chapters one through ten this week. And we are up to chapter four. It has been prophesied the house of uh, Eli uh, and his sons. Um, God is very displeased and um, it's been prophesied that um, both his sons would die in the same day. Um, so we're going to see what happens as we read further. So in chapter 4, um, defeat and loss of the ark. So it was that the word of Samuel went forth to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines in battle. They camped at Ebenezer while the Philistines camped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in battle array to meet Israel, and when the battle was fought, Israel was defeated before the Philistines, who killed 4,000 men on the battlefield. When the people came back to the camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did Adonai bring defeat on us today before the Philistines? Let's fetch the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai from Shiloh, that he may come among us and deliver us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh. And from there, they carry the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai Sabaoth, who sits above the cherubim. Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Now when the Ark of the Covenant of Adonai entered the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the ground resounded. When the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they wondered, what's this noise of a great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? When they realized that the Ark of Adonai had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. So they said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has ever happened before. Woe to us. Who will deliver us from the hand of this mighty God? This is the God that struck down the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and conduct yourself like men, O Philistines, or else you will become enslaved to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be like men and fight. So the Philistines did fight, and Israel was defeated. They fled every man to his tent. The slaughter was very great, as 30,000 of Israel's foot soldiers fell. Moreover, the ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Now that same day, a man of Benjamin ran from the battlefield and came to Shelah with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So he rent his clothes and, and, and put, it's like the ashes on his head. When he arrived, behold, Eli was sitting on his seat by the wayside, watching, for his heart was trembling for the ark of God. When the man arrived to announce it in the town, the entire town cried. And when Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he asked, what's this noisy commotion? So the man rushed and came and told Eli, Eli was 98 years old, and his eyes were fixed in a blind stare. Then the man said to Eli, I am one coming from the battlefield. I escaped from the battlefield today. What is happening, my son, he asked. And the messenger answered and said, Israel fled before the Philistines, and there has also been a great slaughter among the people. Also, your two sons died, Hophni and Phinehas, and the ark of God was captured. As soon as he mentioned of the Ark of God, Eli fell backward from his seat beside the town gate. His neck broke and he died, for he was old and heavy. He had judged Israel forty years. Now his daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, was with child and about to deliver. When she heard the report that the Ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she crouched down and gave birth because she was seized with her labor pains and she was dying the woman attending her said to her don't be afraid for you have brought forth a son but she did not respond or take it to heart then she named the child Ichabod saying the glory has departed from Israel 
because of the capture of the ark of God and because of her father-in-law and her husband. So she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark has been taken. And that's what Ichabod means. So um, that is the end of chapter four. Chapter five, the ark afflicts the Philistines. Now the Philistines had taken the ark of God and they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. The Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to the temple of Dagon, and that's their false god, and placed it beside Dagon. So, and Dagon was a fish god. Um, interestingly enough, uh, the Pope wears this on his head. Um, it is a pagan god, it's a fish god, and it was the god of the Philistines. Okay, so um, the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it to the temple of Dagon and placed it beside Dagon. But when the Ashdodites arose early the next morning, to everyone's surprise, Dagon had fallen to his face on the ground before the Ark of Adonai. So they took Dagon up and put him back in his place. But when they arose early the following morning, surprisingly, Dagon had fallen to his face on the ground before the Ark of Adonai and the head of Dagon and both palms of his hands were cut off on the threshold. Only Dagon's trunk was left on him. That is why to this day, rather the priests of Dagon, nor any who enter Dagon's house will tread on Dagon's threshold in Ashdod. Then the hand of Adonai was heavy on the Ashd Ashdodites, ravaging them and afflicting Ashdod and, and its vicinity with tumors. When the men of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not stay with us, for his hand has dealt harshly against us as well as against our God, Dagon. So they sent word and gathered all the lords of the Philistines to them and asked, What will we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They replied, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried over to Gath, so, so they carried the ark of the God of Israel over, but it came about that after they had carried it around, that the hand of Adonai was against the city, causing very great panic, and he struck the people of the city from the youngest to the oldest, so that tumors broke out on them. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. But it came about as the Ark of God came to Ekron that the Akronites cried out, saying, They brought around the they brought around the Ark of God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. So they sent word and gathered all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send the Ark of the God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place so it won't kill us and our people. For panic of death was throughout the entire city, as God's hand was very heavy there. The people who did not die were afflicted with tumors, so that the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Philistines send back the ark. This is actually in chapter 6. They had had enough. Um, they had moved it from city to city, and, and the same things were happening, uh, because they were not supposed to have the ark of the covenant. After the ark of Adonai had been... In the country of the Philistines, seven months, the Philistines summoned the priests and the diviners, saying, What should we do with the Ark of Adonai? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. So they said, If you are going to send the Ark of God of Israel back, do not send it empty, for you must surely return it with a guilt offering. Then you will be healed, and it will be revealed to you why his hand has not been removed from you. What guilt offering should we return to him? They asked. So they said five golden tumors and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For one plague was on each of you and on your lords. So you will make images of your tumors and, and images of your mice that mar the land. And you must give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand off of you, your gods and your land. Why harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he afflicted them, didn't they send them away? So they left. Now, therefore, get a new cart ready, two milk cows on which there has never been a yoke 
hitch the cows to the cart and return their calves home away from them. Then take the Ark of Adonai and place it on the cart and also put the golden objects that you return to him as a guilt offering in a box by its side. Then send it off so it may go. Then watch. If it goes up by the way of its own territory to Beth Shemesh, Shemesh, then it was he who inflicted on us this great harm. But if not, then we will know that it was not his hand that struck us. It just happened to us by chance. So the people did so. They took two milk cows and hitched them to the cart and shut up their calves at home. Then they placed the Ark of Adonai on the cart together with the box, the golden mice, and the, the models of their tumors. So the cows took the way straight towards Beth Shemesh, and they kept along the same highway, lowing as they went, and turned aside neither to the right nor to the left. The lords of the Philistines followed them to the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were, were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. When they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark, they rejoiced to see it. The cart came to the field of Joshua at Beth Shemesh and stopped there where there was a, a large stone. Then they chopped the wood of the cart and offered up the cows as a burnt offering to Adonai. The Levites took down the ark of Adonai and the box that was with it that contained the gold objects and placed them on the large stone. Then the people of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrifices to Adonai that day. Now when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron that same day. So these are the golden tumors that the Philistines returned as a guilt offering to Adonai, one for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, and one for Ekron. Ekron, I'm sorry. The golden mice also corresponded to the number of all the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords both the fortified cities and their country villages, as far as the large stone on which they had set down the Ark of Adonai. It remains to this day in the field of Joshua at Beth Shemesh. Then he struck down some of the men at Beth Shemesh because they had gazed into the Ark of Adonai. He struck down the people, 70 out of 50,000 men. They were not supposed to do that. Uh, the people mourned because Adonai had struck the people a great slaughter. So the men of Beth Shemesh asked, Who is able to stand before Adonai, this holy God? To whom should it go up from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jerim, Kiriath Jerim, and saying, The Philistines have brought back the ark of Adonai. Come down, bring it up to you. And chapter 7 Samuel's victory at Mizpah, M I Z P A. H. Then the men of Kiriath Jerem came and fetched up the ark of Adonai, brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill, and consecrated Eleazar his son to guard the ark of Adonai. From the day the ark rested in Kiriath Jerem, it was a long time, twenty years, and the whole house of Israel yearned after Adonai. Then Samuel spoke to the whole house of Israel, saying, if you are returning to Adonai with all of your heart, then remove the foreign gods and the Ashtoreth from among you. Direct your hearts to Adonai and serve him only. Then he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So Benaiah Israel removed Balaam and the Ashtoreth and served Adonai only. They served Adonai alone. Then Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray to Adonai for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before Adonai. They fasted on that day and said there, We have sinned against Adonai. Then Samuel was judging Benai Israel at Mizpah. Now, when the Philistines heard that Benai Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines marched against Israel. When Benai Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So Benai Israel said to Samuel, Don't stop crying out to Adonai our God for us. He may save us from the hand of the Philistines. Samuel took a nursing lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to Adonai. Then Samuel cried out to Adonai for Israel, and Adonai answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But Adonai thundered with loud thunder on that day against the Philistines and confused them so that they were defeated before Israel. 
Then the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down all the way to below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and named Ebenezer, saying, Thus far Adonai has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not invade the border of Israel any more. The hand of Adonai was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The towns that the Philistines had taken from Israel from Ekron to Gath were restored to Israel, and Israel recovered its territory from the hand of the Philistines. There was also peace between Israel and the Amorites. Now Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He used to go annually on a circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and would judge over Israel in all those places. Then his return was to Ramah because his home was there and from there he would judge Israel. So he built an altar to Adonai there. There's a little footnote here in regards to um, Ichabod. Um, it is in Hebrew. Um, it, it's spelled E-Y-K-A-V-O-D, meaning no glory. And that was what the child's name was and when that had happened in chapter 4 um, when Eli had died and the ark was taken and, and uh, Eli's uh, both sons also died um, as a result. So um, I'm going to recap here. Chapters 4 through 7, Israel's defeated by the Philistines. The Philistines take the Ark of the Covenant from their possession. And Eli dies during this time. His sons die. Um, and then, um, actually, it doesn't go well for the Philistines, actually, either having um, having this Ark. Um, there's tumors that... Uh, arise people are ending up dead um their god dagon falls flat on his face and gets all broken up because they put the ark of the covenant in there with them so it doesn't go very well and they keep moving this ark from town to town and it's not going well in any of the towns so they decided um they built a cart and sent you know and sent those golden the golden tumors and the golden mice and on this cart with milk cows and if it would go if, if it would go a certain way um, to Beth Shemesh um, then they knew that it was the hand of God uh, because that's where the Hebrews were but if it did not and it, just, it, it didn't go on a straight path that way um, then it was just by chance but it went to where um, it was supposed to go so they realized that this was the hand of God and um anyway um the children of israel got the ark of the covenant back and then we end with samuel actually um telling them that you know they have sinned against god and they need to get rid of these idols and they need to stop worshiping um ba baal doing baal worship and getting rid of their ashtaroth and turn their hearts back to god and then you know they would not be taken over by the Philistines anymore. And as he's doing that, the Philistines are coming coming at them. And what happened is God showed, showed that he was in control and he caused confusion to come upon the Phil Philistines. And they were defeated before Israel. So um, that is what, that is how that ended. And I think I'm going to come back with a part four. Um, because we're going to get into um, the demand for a king and actually Saul up to the, the point where Saul is anointed as king. So we're going to, that's how it's actually going to end with chapter 10.